the Steam Deck has getting better. Windows 11, nobody wants it. And Intel, holy crap, your chips are bad. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Friday, May 3rd, 2024, we're gonna start off today with a pretty big update to the Steam Deck, courtesy of NVIDIA, which is that actually, before we get into the hot news, interrupting past Brett there, we're giving away this PC on Twitch today. It's a 14900 KS RTX 4090. Has the height thick Q60 liquid cooler that we just did a sponsored video on over there and it's in the height Y70. It's a great little PC. We're giving it away to one of you. You can come join us on Twitch. That's happening at 12 p.m. Eastern. Back to the past guy. They have made it significantly easier to get GeForce Now installed on this Linux device. It's nothing too complicated. It essentially is just an auto script that downloads Chrome and gets it set up to take the inputs for the Steam Deck and have that enabled by default for the gamepad and then adds that as a GeForce Now shortcut to your Steam library, which is just nice because it's a it's a nice enabling script allowing people to be able to play PC games that potentially don't work on the Steam Deck or might you know run a little bit slower on the hardware that Valve has put into this device and make it so that it can perform a little bit better. There are still a few tweaks you have to make in order to get it set up with like the little touch pads and everything but by and large this is a nice little update to what is a great device that's currently out on the market so well done to, to Nvidia for making that happen but everybody's saying no done bad done undone to Windows 11 because it turns out that in the latest market share reports, Windows 11 has decreased in its market share and Windows 10 has increased. And that's despite the fact that we're just 18 odd months away from Windows 10 going end of life and then you have to pay to get security updates for it. Windows 11 dropped nearly a full percentage point in popularity, which is roughly how much Windows 10 gained. So it's clear people are reverting back to Windows 10 because they just don't want to be on 11 anymore, but turns out that's not the truth with gamers because the Steam hardware survey has come out showing that Windows 11 is at an all-time high market share of 45% on Steam. Turns out gamers are actively installing Windows 11. It increased 3.5% while Windows 10 went down 3.3%. So it appears like gamers are embracing Windows 11, which is not necessarily the narrative that I hear from a lot of people, but it turns out if you're trying to play games, Windows 11's the place to do it. Ain't that right, Kyler? Gamer. You know who else is a gamer? I hear Reese is. You should go, you should go chat with him. All right, cool. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Friday, everyone. And hey, we've got some deals because that's what this whole section's about. And starting us off today is the Superflower Ledx V Gold Pro, which is a 1000 watt, 80 plus gold, fully modular power supply, for only $159.99 with the included promo code, making it $90 off. And then continuing our Ryzen 5000 deal streak, we have the Ryzen 7 5700X desktop processor that comes bundled with a free 16 gig DDR4 memory kit for only $176.84, making it $122.15 off for the bundle. And then lastly, we have this really cool monitor from MSI, which is a 40 inch 3440 by 1440, 155Hz ultra wide gaming monitor for only $359.99 with the included promo code, making it $40 off for one really cool and unique monitor. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it turns out that console gamers are getting a great deal when it comes to what the PS5 Pro is gonna offer. There's new reports coming out that the RDNA 4 graphics cards, which is supposed to be the RX 8000, is supposed to have a redeveloped ray tracing engine. Everything that the RX 7000 series has right now is just built on what the RX 6000 was, just tweaked and made to be a little bit better, but RDNA 4 is supposed to be reworked from the ground up. And the reason this is a good news for console gamers is because the RDNA 4 ray tracing cores are supposed to be brought into this new weird SOC that's supposed to be in the PS5 Pro. So each ray tracing core could theoretically double its output for every clock cycle it has, meaning that you could see tremendous ray tracing improvements on the PS5 Pro, which is what has been alleged for the last little bit, that that is Sony's focus, making sure that ray tracing doesn't come at a performance hit and that you can run it essentially the same as you can run a regular game on the regular PS5 without ray tracing. So this appears to all be coming together, console gamers getting the best of AMD before you can on your PC at home. But in case you want the best of Intel, it looks like you have to buy the i7-13700K because a user over on the Chiphill forum got hundreds of Intel CPUs to do stability testing on and it turns out 
that the i7-13700K is 0% unstable in their testing, which is good news for everybody who bought the i7 version. Horrifically bad news in case you purchased any of the i9 chips, because with all of this testing, it turns out that the 14900K is stable in only two out of every 10 units at default motherboard settings. Now, all of this was tested with Asus motherboards, which just anecdotally, I don't know if this is true based on data, but it is kind of just getting my sense of everything that's going on by reading it from different places that Asus is pushing the CPUs the hardest in its base profile. So this might be worse in this testing because they used Asus motherboards, but it's not necessarily invalidated testing because Asus motherboards are very popular, but still two out of every 10 on a default profile of 14900K are that is not stable. If you reduce the load line, it gets up to 30%. And then if you test a 14900K on a B series motherboard, it goes up to 40%. 13900K is slightly better, makes a little bit of sense because it's not as highly clocked. And that starts at 40 to 50% stability, 50 to 60 on reduced load line, and then 60 to 70 on the B series motherboard. So this is a this is a rough situation. Two out of every 10 CPUs. Like this uh, looks really bad for Intel. This seems to be a very strong condemnation of their chips. It's clear if you're running a 14th gen i9 on an Asus motherboard, you need to be doing something in order to get stability on it because eight times out of 10, it is not going to actually run in a stable fashion, which is why the 14900KS that we're giving away in that hype build, I have installed the baseline profile on the Gigabyte Aorus motherboard that's in there. And I've made sure that everything's locked down so that it is performing stably as best as I can when we give it away. But this is this is just a rough situation overall. More and more details keep coming out about it. I don't think Intel should wait too long before releasing their full statement on what's going on. I think they need to take responsibility for not actually setting standards for these motherboard makers and making sure that their chips are stable. I think that they need to uh, discuss the fact that the reason this is happening is because they are pushing their chips too hard, too far, too fast in order to compete with AMD. And I think Think that they need to make sure that any and all warranty claims from lack of performance should be honored. Intel users should be able to say, hey, my chip is not performing as promised and it's not running stably. I want a refund or I want a replacement. Either, either one of those should be honored by Intel with no questions asked. That's my personal opinion on this. If we're gonna have the good faith to buy your product because of your longstanding brand reputation, I think that there should be trust given back to the purchasers to say, hey, even though this system can be abused because this situation is so grievous, we are going to actually do something properly about this. I don't know what you do with your motherboard if you get a refund on your Intel CPU, maybe downgrade to an i7-13700K because that's the most stable chip out of the bunch. But I hope Intel comes through with a really good response here. So far, it has not looked great, but I, we'll just have to see and take it as it comes. Which, let's get into the comment response to see what you guys left for me. But in case you wanna know what's coming out this weekend, here on UFD Tech, we got a little sneak preview for you over on Floatplane. Kyler did this really great video where he examined how to make a mouse super lightweight. And there's even gonna be a video from Reese this weekend, both of which you can watch early over on Floatplane. But on yesterday's episode of Hot News on Floatplane, Kryptonite said, don't get me started on Xeon Gold, Silver, Platinum. I'd be all in on AMD GPUs, but a home lab and CUDA is king and ARC in Linux. ARC doesn't need special drivers. ARC, 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 ARC. I forgot about the Xeon Gold Platinum Silver thing. It, it, Intel's branding has not, not been great as of late. But what has been great for us, before I get into more comments, is the amount of support we've been seeing on our YouTube channel. As of right now, we are at... Kyler, how many subs do we have? 899.502. We're at 899,502 subs. It looks like we should actually be at 900 before this episode of Hot News even goes live. <laughs> So I just want to thank you all for that. And it also looks like we should cross 800 million channel views. That's, that's, I don't even know how to calculate the fact that people have seen me, Kyler, Reese, Catlin, everybody who's been on the channel that many times. I, that's just, that's wild. 800 million times, Kyler. You've been around for most of it. Like you've, you've only been here for just over two years, but you've been here for the vast majority of views and subs. 
it's been thank you all for the support well next stop i guess a million subs and a billion views i don't know how to process that but getting in the comments cybertech says if everything is ultra then nothing is ultra uh, uh, but uh ultra really cool name really it's a really it's a good name i like i like it and then wabash saying something that i really really liked because i had not been thinking this way saying the oddest thing about the core ultra branding is that they stated that the core part of the branding was the iconic part I never heard anyone say Core i9, it was always just i9. Core was extremely redundant and didn't matter in the slightest. I haven't said Core in the name since Core 2 Duo. That, you're absolutely right. The i is the thing that is like my brain is latching onto. I didn't think this way, but you absolutely are spelling out why uh, shifting to Ultra feels so uh, horrible and like they're they're bastardizing their branding like core ultra yeah keeping the core is not the iconic part keeping the eyes the iconic part it's just you're right you're right then darren saying i have a herman miller air on chair that was purchased for me through work in 2001 i thought it was a ripoff at the time i'm still using this chair it's in near perfect condition it's fantastic the best chair I've ever had. The chair has retired with me now and is my gaming chair. Going to be buried with it or maybe incinerated with it. Not sure yet. That's high praise. High praise. I was very excited when Herman Miller reached out to, to sponsor us and I uh, have uh, heard so many good things. Never got to experience them before. They sent out the chairs. Obviously love them. And I know that they'll be put to good use here at Team UFD Tech over the coming years, which I'm excited about. And then we got Zero saying, I am and I did. Your video title is refused. <laughs> and that's because the video is titled nobody's buying amd which one person bought amd so therefore i it hyperbole for the sake of dramatic effect is null and void thank you thank you you're right i i, I forgot i forgot that uh, I, uh, people exist and we got jason saying elon laying off the supercharging staff does not mean he's shutting down superchargers my impression is that he's going to restaff with lower cost employees who are more focused on keeping the system running and growing the network at a slower pace yeah i know i know i'm fully aware i i realize that shutting down the supercharger team does not mean they're shutting down superchargers i didn't conflate that but i think i think the assumption which we're both assuming, right? That they're going to restaff it with inexperienced people, I think is just a mind numbing move. It doesn't, I can't, I can't understand how it possibly makes sense because Tesla did something that nobody else in the industry did, which is build out a consistent, reliable, and thorough charging network. There's no competing company that you can pull from who has done that in the United States. Electrify America, absolute garbage. ChargePoint, trash, EVgo, worse than all of those. So the fact that Tesla did something that wasn't done before means that they had experience in that staff that you cannot replace in order to keep it running the way that it is. And I think replacing that staff with lower cost employees is also replacing them with lower eff efficacy employees. You're getting lesser experienced people who weren't there at the very beginnings. And like, I like experience matters a lot it, in my opinion obviously i'm not running uh one of the wealthiest companies in the planet but the idea that the team that was developed to deploy this network didn't have inherent expertise that you cannot get just by uh swapping them out with another per person i i find that baffling because if that's true why haven't all these other companies been able to achieve the same thing tesla did i think they had special people i think they had an actual incredible team doing incredible work and you don't get that from everybody so removing the team is is just a, a move that i think is going to lower the quality experience of tesla superchargers and therefore lower the quality experience of uh, being part of the tesla uh infrastructure it just it doesn't it doesn't add value to their company even if it reduces costs that's that's my my understanding which like the idea behind layoffs is that you're increasing the value of your company by decreasing overhead and thinking that you're going to remove inefficiencies but the supercharging network is not like i'm sure there are inefficiencies on the team but getting rid of the entire team just i i 
it, I, time has to prove me wrong here. That's that's essentially what it's gonna come down to. I can't understand this move from the outset. I can't find a valid reason that uh, coincides with how I see the world. So I like, in order for me to be uh, convinced that this is not a bad idea, I'm just gonna have to see it played out. And then we got Gordon saying, saying says ASOP and then proceeds to say Android open source project. And that is because ever since I have unlocked my first bootloader on my HTC Evo 3D, AOSP has always, always been refactored in my brain as ASOP, ASOP. I don't know how to, I don't know how to stop my brain from doing that. I know how it's spelled. I don't have any sort of uh, challenge with acronyms outside of this. It really is like focus specifically on A AOSP. I almost screwed it up there. I like my brain swaps the S and the O every single time for this acronym and this acronym only. And I'm sorry, I, 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 I couldn't stop myself. It's just like when I said iPhone 6A instead of Pixel 6A, my brain just, goes where it wants sometimes. And I'm going not here because hot news is over for this week. We'll be back with more of the hottest tech news on Monday. We're giving away that hype PC at 12 p.m. Eastern today. And you can catch all of our weekend videos coming out because the weekend's coming.